Hello everyone, thank you for checking out this video. You are with Coach Jordan from Territory Academy. Right now, we are going to be solving this question together. For this lesson, we will be making use of the discriminant um, from a quadratic equation to help us solve this question. All right, so given that A, B, and C are all positive numbers, and that this quadratic equation has two equal roots, determine if three segments of lengths A, B, and C can form a triangle, and if so, show what type of triangle is being formed. All right, so first let us observe the criteria here, which is the fact that I need to have two equal roots from this quadratic equation. Now, to show whether this equation has two equal roots or not, we're going to make use of this concept called the discriminant. All right, and this discriminant refers to the expression b squared minus 4ac. All right, so let us first uh, talk a little bit about how this is called the discriminant and why this can be used. Now, our quadratic formula suggests that for a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c, this being the general form, x can be written as negative b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac, which is all over 2a. Now, the reason that for most quadratic equations, we have two different roots is due to this expression over here. All right, if this expression here is a positive number greater than zero, then that will give rise to two separate values due to the plus minus sign outside of the square root. All right, now if this is instead equal to zero, notice that the square root of zero is also going to be zero. All right, therefore, my numerator is literally just negative b. The plus minus doesn't generate two separate values anymore. All right. And therefore, as long as we can show that our discriminant, which is in our expression underneath our square root, is, has a value of 0, then we can show that these two roots are equal. All right? Graphically speaking, if I have an x-axis and a y-axis like this, if we were to show that this graph has two equal roots, this would be how it's done. Notice that the graph, or rather the x-axis, is actually tangent to the graph, meaning that they only intersect at one particular point, right? And therefore, this shows that there are two equal roots, okay? So all we need to do is show that the discriminant must be zero. So based on the equation that we are given, since this is already in the general form, we can just use the coefficients straight away as presented, where my b is now 2b, so this is b squared minus 4, c plus a, and my c is actually c minus a. Alright, so therefore I know that this has to be 0 to achieve two equal roots. So I just need to expand this moving forward. At this stage, notice that I have a form c plus a, c minus a, which should therefore give rise to c squared minus a squared based on our identities. All right, so I have 4b squared minus 4c squared plus 4a squared equals to 0. All right, rearranging my terms over here, I should be able to get 4a squared plus 4b squared equals to 4c squared. And since every term contains a 4, we can simply divide by 4 throughout to obtain this simple equation over here. Now, does this equation look familiar? Well, it should, because this is exactly what the Pythagoras theorem is stating. All right, therefore, a right angle triangle, if A, B, and C are your three sides, then this relationship holds true. Therefore, yes, a triangle with these three line segments can be formed. And specifically, this triangle is in fact a right angle triangle. Right, because this is essentially just the Pythagoras theorem. All right, and therefore we have shown that a triangle can be formed and your triangle is actually a right angle triangle. So for this question, we just need a basic understanding of how to use the discriminant 
to determine the nature of your roots for an quadratic equation and then proceed to apply some basic identities such as difference of squares over here and then just some simple manipulation to obtain this equation which is actually just Pythagoras theorem. We have completed this lesson. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson. Goodbye and see you again in another lesson. If you would like to learn more from these tutorials, please smash that like and subscribe button.